Hey everyone, welcome to my hard mode 1cc of Musha for the Sega Genesis. This is played on my recently acquired Mister, not on original hardware, but I think at this point the Mister is getting to be so accurate and so reliable that you can kind of consider it the equivalent of original hardware. And what's cool about this run is not only is it a hard mode 1cc, but I demonstrate a score rollover, and from what I can find looking around online, this is the first documented score rollover. I'm not sure if anyone's actually ever done this. Um, it's not impossible. It's pretty likely someone has, but no one has got it on tape or whatever on video, and no one's documented it on any score websites or anything like that, so this could be considered right now the highest publicly available score for this game until someone gets around to documenting it. Anyway, shoutouts to the guy MME in my Discord. He showed me the video of this score glitch. I didn't really have instructions on how to replicate it. I had to figure that bit out myself, but with a little bit of tinkering and sort of analyzing the video back, I was able to figure out how to actually activate this glitch, which is really the key to getting the score rollover to happen. Well, it's one ingredient. So what you need to do is you need to set yourself up to where you're, you got your little uh, shield thing here, and it has to be close enough to where it's not damaging it, but it has to be really close without actually damaging. Then you have to line up your options, it's a little bit complicated, and you need to just pepper him one off, one shot at a time, because the way you trigger it, at least from my understanding, is that one shot away from death, he will trigger the glitch. So if you shoot him twice rather than once, he'll die and you won't get the glitch. So you have to just really line it up very carefully. And the way you can tell if it worked more reliably is if you're right there with your shield and everything because it'll uh, register the score change a little bit more clearly. It's kind of hard to explain, but basically you have to be in a very precise location, a very precise angle with your shot here. And you have to just patiently get it. There you go. So there it starts. And then once you get it started, you have to move over. That was scary. And start shooting him without damaging him. Because if he, one more shot will kill him, and there goes your glitch, right? So you just get in the right position there, and then you wait it out. I'm not sure if there's a timer, because I did this once before, and the boss died halfway through the glitch, and I think it was just because I took too long. And so this time around, you kind of have to be a little bit on top of it to get the glitch in time to get the full payout. So the interesting thing about this glitch is if you just sit here and do it, when you get to, you know, 990, the game will actually soft lock. And so all the highest recorded scores that I could find in the highest recorded videos I can find are people basically soft locking right here and saying, okay, we've we've counter stopped the game basically where you get up here and then the counter stops and the game locks up and that's the highest possible score is what I think at least some people thought but actually I found out you can roll over the score if you continue to play the game and get the 1 CC you'll get a final score bonus at the end and what I expected to happen was I expected the game to just soft lock right there say okay we're done but it actually didn't. Instead, it rolled the score over, so that's pretty cool. I haven't seen that happen before. I'm, I'm not sure if anyone's documented that happening. The documentation for shmups, I also want to talk about this, is extremely frustrating because the farm does a crap job of it. There is no so sort of, you know, I'm working on leaderboards, and I think the leaderboards are going to help a lot. But right now, this is like a weird situation where I don't really feel comfortable claiming this as a world record or anything like that but at the same time I literally cannot find a higher score and I do know that the highest potential score in this game is only a little bit higher than the score I achieved and if I sat down and really did a little bit of math I could get basically the max score or extremely close to the max score basically the idea is you need to get the milk on this glitch high enough to when you're at the end of the game you basically want to be as close to that counter stop as possible which is 990 you want to be as close to that as possible to actually going over and then when you kill the final boss you get that payout which will roll over your score and that is the max score in the game from my 
understanding, unless there's more magic to be had, but from my understanding, that really as high as you can go, and the game itself can't even handle those digits, which is kind of cool. But I actually went a little bit higher than I was planning to, but in the end it, it worked out for the better. So 9-4. I actually did a run before, like an entire run before this where I got the glitch and played the whole, whole game through and everything. And that's where I kind of was gauging how, how high to make this milk before I actually, you know, go for the run. And it's about 9-4, 9-5-ish area. Nine five and a half. If you really want to push it and you want to really maximize it, so if I wanted to increase my score towards the max of this game that I'm aware of, I probably would have gone about nine five and a half rather than going nine four and a half. But yeah, I cut it pretty close to that counter stop, which I was pretty satisfied about. And like I said, what I thought would happen was I thought the game would just soft lock and that I would just have a clear counter stop. Because I figured, okay, well, if it soft locks during the the end bonus, that counts as a clear, right? Um, I've never heard of a shmup ever, ever doing that, which would be really interesting. But I thought that's what was going to happen. I actually didn't. Instead, I was able to get the clear and get to the credits, and it rolled the score over. So that, that was pretty cool. I have no idea why it's able to roll the score over during the max. The, clear bonus but not during regular gameplay probably just because of the smaller digits and doing calculations down on those there's some weird math going on down there or something like that I also was scared because you'll notice I have 999 lives and then I earn an extra life and I roll over the counter for 99 and I thought okay if I die I might be soft lock but actually no I didn't and so it's keeping track you can tell it's keeping track of the digits even if it doesn't show it on the screen. And that's why I feel comfortable saying this is a rollover because it keeps track of the live digits but it just doesn't show them on screen once you pass 999 as you'll see as I keep playing. Anyway, so enough on that technical stuff. Let's also talk about the game itself, Musha, which is around one of my favorite 16-bit shmups now. I've been playing this game for quite a bit of time over the past two or three days um, probably totaling around 25 hours or so in all total um, I did get a normal clear and then I got a hard clear with the glitch but with a lower score and then I got the uh, this run you see right here I don't know if I'll ever go for a non glitched run because hard clear because I think as amazing as this game is, I think some of the game design is a little bit flawed, especially in hard mode, where basically it's like Gradius Syndrome really badly, where if you die in certain sections in the later stages, it's just over, especially the last two stages, which really wouldn't be that big of a deal, except for the fact that the game is really long. And so basically it gets pretty monotonous pretty fast to where you're just playing the first four stages or so from run to run and it's about the same and it doesn't really matter how well you do in the first four stages it really doesn't unless you just die in them but short of dying in them it really doesn't matter that much because you max out on your leveling and all that in stage one or two and then the extra lives don't really matter you can save the extra little options you can see up top there's that little plain looking thing though that's your options help that is helpful to save up in, in some of those sections where you get pinned down but even still I don't think it's that big of a difference so it really just comes down to can you clear those stages without getting hit or can you not and the I think the hit detection in this game and just some of like the fundamental gameplay of the game is a little bit jank not really jank, just a little bit jank to where it's not impossible or anything like that. Definitely not. It's just really monotonous to basically go for it over and over and over. And especially since it's kind of a little bit wild and erratic and stuff. So I think this is kind of a cool section to go through. But anyway, as far as 16-bit shmups go though, I think it's extremely good. 
and when I was playing it I was not quite prepared for how much I'd enjoy this game. I think it's a bit of an open secret that I struggle to enjoy older shmups, especially 16-bit era, 8-bit era shmups, because they're usually, for me, I feel like they're really primitive and limited, and frankly, some of them are just boring, you know, you're just flying around at low speeds, low power, low enemy counts. For me, I get a little bit bored with all that. But Musha, when I was playing it, I was like, this feels really close to like a bullet hell. It's not a bullet hell, but it's... It's definitely got the DNA, and then as I kept playing, I was thinking, man, this game really reminds me of another game. And then I was trying to think what it was, then I realized it reminds me a lot of Sorcerer Striker, or Mahou, Maho, I don't know how to say it in Japanese, but Sorcerer Striker, which is the first game by Raising, the company that went on to make Battle Garega and these amazing, you know, Bat Rider, all these amazing, well beloved shmup. So this was made by Compile. But the staff who worked on Compile also went on to make Sorcerer Striker, and you can really, really tell it imprinted in the DNA of this game. And that's not something I've heard commented on before when I was talking about this with other people on Discord and such. Really not many people were all that interested in this game, which surprised me, because most people seem to really salivate over these 16 bitch mumps, but and I know this one is pretty well pretty notorious for its price. Uh, just, you know, rare, collectible, blah, blah, blah. But as far as gameplay, I really liked it a lot because it, it made me feel like I was playing Sorcerer Striker or like a very, very rudimentary, fundamental version of that game where you can see, like, how, like, these bosses, this this is like some of the bosses even in Batrider, right? The guy who, the ninja dude who throws, like, stars at you and spins. Well, not that ninja, but the samurai dude, I mean. This feels like a very similar sprite, and the quality of the art in this game, I think, is absolutely fantastic, especially for the Genesis. Overall, this is definitely a hidden gem on the Genesis, and one of my favorite Genesis games by far. I don't just play 25 hours of some old-school 16-bit shmup unless I like it, right? And I think I actually do enjoy playing this game more than some of my other previously favorite 16 bit shmups like Axelay, UN Squadron. I actually enjoy playing Musha more. I, so, I definitely recommend this game. Extremely fun. Especially on normal difficulty. I think normal difficulty is going to be good for everyone. And if you're looking into getting into shmups, I don't think this is really that bad of a starter shmup. It's a little bit strange. It's a little bit unique. But it's really got a lot of good fundamental shmup design you can see the brilliance that here it's not fully formed into like a bat rider into a grega but it you can see the dna's on its way i really like the player sprite i think it's really cool of course he's got a pretty hefty hitbox but it's not as hefty as his visuals indicate you know older shmup Usually, their sprite is like entirely hitbox. For him, he's a, he's a chunky boy. He's got a big old hitbox on him, but it's not absolutely massive, which I appreciated considering the size of the sprite and everything. I think it's really cool the sprite design. You're like flying a Gundam, basically, or something like that. Yeah, I I absolutely really enjoy this game. I'm trying to find other fun things. I guess I could talk a little bit about the weapon system. So the weapon system is pretty unique. I think it's not that far off of Sorcerer Striker, my, if my memory serves. Basically you've got three different weapon types. You've got the laser, the green laser, the blue shield, which you see me using here, and the red sort of spread missile bomb. They're all pretty solid. They're all pretty good. And the way you upgrade them is by staying on a color and collecting it again and that actually upgrades the level across all of them not just that one so you see i'm on level three i don't have a uh, weapon because i got hit what's also nice too is you can take hits and you lose your weapon but you don't die and then after you lose your weapon if you take a hit again you die but see i've got a weapon the weapons give you an extra hit with this knife another thing i really appreciate about this game is the auto fire is built in it is really good 
It's not. I actually experimented with, you know, in emulator trying auto fire rates to see if it made the game easier. You know, if you could break the auto fire. Doesn't seem like it. It seems like the built-in auto fire is just as good as if you did a custom auto fire. At least from what I could tell. Maybe there's a really magical custom auto fire setting that makes a difference, but from what I could tell. The built-in auto fire works extremely well, which I really appreciate. Especially again, this era of shmups. This was the era of button mashing, right? So again, you can see the forward-looking des game design of this this game. I'm really interested to check out the other in the Aleph series. I I hope I'm saying that correctly, because Compile made a series of these. One is on the SNES. I've heard a lot about Space Mega Force. I never actually played it, so I'll have to play that. Check that one out. And then Spriggan on the PC Engine or whatever it is, Turbo Graphics, PC Engine, whatever one. Uh, so I've heard a lot about Spriggan as well, so I'll have to check that out. Check that one out because I was really impressed with Musha, especially on the Genesis. This thing's bringing the heat for a Genesis game, I have to say. As far as the bright, the production value, overall, I am a fan of the Genesis, but I can I usually kind of figure the quality of the game as far as the visuals are tend to be a little bit lower than Super Nintendo just hardware wise and all that good stuff but this game looks absolutely fantastic so I'll be really so right now this is my favorite Genesis shmup, shmup but I haven't put a whole lot of time on the Genesis so I'll have to play the other ones that everyone talks about a bunch like Thunder Force I do enjoy playing them on my mister I'm not gonna lie what's funny is I have an actual Genesis so it's not like I don't own one, it's sitting in my shed in here with me. But at this point, I'm I'm getting less and less interested in using original hardware, to be honest. And the Mr. I'll do a whole review on the Mr. here soon, so I don't need to spend too many thoughts on it. But it was fun being able to play these on the Mr. rather than just playing them in emulator, but not having to worry about original hardware. Because I want to play with my arcade stick, and the Genesis resists the power of the brooks so you actually can't use your brooks retro board on the genesis for some insane reason so it has to have its own special controller and own a special pcb for your arcade stick and it's like i like the genesis but i'm not i'm not sure if i'm willing to go that far so another cool part about the mr plus you know it upscales it perfectly to hdmi and i do have a uh, ossc but still i don't have to deal with getting the SCART cables and all that sort of thing. Plus the space consideration. I have to show a picture of this when I do the Mr. Review, but I don't have a whole lot of space in here anymore. I can't have just all these consoles hanging around. So the more I can cut down on them being actually in here and you know put them as little collector's pieces basically, the happier I'm gonna be. Put them in my storage closet, nice and safe. You know, to break out from time to time, but not have them regularly on my setup just because of the space considerations. So this is the stage that gets real filthy when it starts the whole, you, if you get hit, recovering is almost pointless. There's other sections in the game that are even worse, but this stage really starts it, and I'll show you which section I'm going to appear. I love the mini boss fights. I love the, the overall game design. I just think if they had changed the and someone could do this with a ROM hack you know people don't seem to ROM hack shmups that much for some reason but if someone ROM hacked it to where when you died instead of losing everything if you like depowered one level or maybe two levels depending on how well you think that's balanced I think that would really improve the game's design overall the enjoyment of playing it on hard mode because like I said this section right here, so you gotta go back. But uh, I took the hit there. So here comes the shenanigans now. Also, look at my uh, life counter real quick before I die. See, I had 100, now it rolls down to 99. I was really nervous. That was actually my first death of the run. I was really nervous because I thought I might soft lock it if I died, which would have sucked, but. No, I was able to keep on playing. So this section here, it's not, the, the frustrating part about this is what I'm saying is, I know how to get through this section. 
but since I got hit during the previous section, it makes getting through this section way, way harder. Not just slightly harder, way harder. Like in Gradius, you know, it has that Gradius Syndrome pretty bad. Whereas in cave games, if you know the routes, even when you get powered down, you can usually make them through just fine. Especially in the first loop. In the second loop, you know, you also lose less power up in the second loop. So I think had they just picked the power down settings on death where you power down one level, I think that would have been the way to go rather than just completely depowering you and making you sit through just a bunch of chain deaths. That's kind of what ha has to happen. That's why I also don't feel all that bad about using this glitch and getting a bunch of lives. Obviously it takes the tension out of the 1cc because once you hit once you hit the glitch the 1cc is pretty much trivial. But I try my best to play a respectable run and for the most part I do except in the last stage where I do a bunch of chain deaths and stuff. But like I said, I did get a normal 1cc clear and I don't know if I'm really dedicated enough to play this game all the time for the hard 1cc. I don't feel that it's out of my grasp, but it just feels like I said, if the game wasn't so damn long, I would get, definitely do it. But since it's going to be about 40 minutes of just kind of flying through the game for the real test, which is the last 10 minutes or so, it feels a little bit bloated. So it's like, okay. And then the fact that you can't really recover, even if you know the routes, it does seem kind of shitty to me, to be honest. So that's why I felt like, you know what, screw you. I'm going to blast my way through. Respect to the people who do get the 1ccs without the glitch, though. That shit is not easy, especially in hard mode. I got the normal mode 1cc with literally one life left or something like that. <laughs> It was right on the money. Just because the last section, I could have practiced that a little better and saved myself some trouble, but hey, it worked out. And you don't really get a life cash bonus, I don't think. I think it's just a static payout. Anyway, right here, I'm just chain, chain dying and point blanking him because I don't. I have plenty of life. It's just more about like saving the viewer experience, save the time getting to the next stage. Because I could fly around and try and dodge all these ridiculous chasing bullets, but they don't really seem. But it, sometimes it's more counterproductive than productive, it feels like, especially when you have all those lives in stock. Just get it over with, I say. And you're going to see more chain deaths in this state. And in the last state. Because it's also tough because even if you make it through the stage, See, Gradius is better about this. Where, if, okay, if you find, if you make it through the stage at least, you'll get your the power ups you need going into the next stage, right? Like they have those little introductory sections in each level where you power up, right? Well, Musha doesn't really do that. It does a tiny bit, but really not all that much. So that's why the game it's an extremely momentum based game. And I'm not really a big fan of that style of game design, and it's another reason I don't really like a lot of older shmup. I feel like, okay, if you know the routing well enough, you should be able to power your way through with some degree, like with extra difficulty, I understand, maybe you have to, you know, be a little bit more on point because you're powered down. But with some of these older shmups like here with Musha, it doesn't matter. You're just going to chain die your way through it and game over. Musha is pretty stingy with the extends too. You only get a few. So normally you have like five lives or something like that. Which seems like a lot, but it's not. It seems like a lot at first because in the first like 30 minutes of the game are easy, even on hard mode. So it's not a problem. It's just those last 10 minutes or so the game ramps up. And there's just a lot of there's a lot of silliness with these last stages here. Like right here, normally you can just blast through this when you're all powered up, but since I'm depowered, it's going to be a very tedious section here. Because even when you get the power up, 
when you're at the level zero, plus I think they should just remove level zero and just go directly to level one, because level zero is basically useless. Barely does any damage. This is something I really dislike about shmups is when your base shot is really, really weak like this. It just gets really tedious. And then there's a lot of chain deaths. But I win game. I figured out your secret. Anyway, commentary here is not going to be too interesting. It's just... I decided to just start dodging stuff, getting the slowdown. I'm wondering how accurate the uh, Mr. Slowdown is, but I'm assuming the Mr. is supposed to be extremely accurate to the original hardware. And it does seem to be that uh, the slowdown is probably very, very close. I think I do a pretty good job for surviving for a little bit here. It's also hard because your hitbox is so huge that making those dodges, even if you're on point, there's you just run out of space real quick because you're a giant robot with a huge hitbox. I do wonder why they made hitboxes so big in old shmups. I understand that the whole concept of making your sprite significantly smaller or your hitbox significantly smaller than your sprite like in uh, cave games was a pretty out there idea initially but still though I wonder why they didn't think okay well, let's shrink this down at least a little bit. <laughs> This boss fight's actually pretty fun. I can't remember if I do well on this one or not. Because the one run I did super well, I know I missed the entire thing. Ah, uh, no. Nah, this one, I, I think I take some hit. And then after you take a death, you know, the fight goes on forever. But I do know all, like, I do know all the boss fights and all that stuff pretty well. Because I did practice, I put a lot of practice in for the, for the regular hard mode once you see without using the, the glitch extra extend Did you notice how popular lava stages are in 16 bit shmups? They love their lava stages. I wonder why that is. Maybe they're just easier to program the backgrounds for, like they're very simple backgrounds to program, I'm guessing. They're like, "Okay, we don't want to do a whole bunch of extra terrain. Let's just throw in the lava stage." Because if you look at a lot of 16-bit shmup, they have a lot of lava state. This this section opening section here is really shameful. I did pra I literally practiced this for three or four hours one day, and that does not show through on the uh, replay here. I'll upload the normal mode replay and put it on the. Uh, I'll just put it as unlisted. Hate that section. Again, it's not bad. That was stupid. It's not bad if you're powered up nice and good, but when you're depowered, all these sections are just horrible. Because you can't kill anything. This is tedious. Not hard, but tedious. I do love, speaking of the game, I do love how you can uh, adjust your shot speed, so it's weird, you have to actually pause the game to do it, so pauses are definitely legal for this game, which I'm not a fan of, like, having to do it via pauses, when, especially when there is an, well, I guess on the three button controller there isn't, so I guess that's why they did it. Stupid Genesis and its three button controller, what were they thinking? Because, yeah, if it had at least, you know, if you had the six button controller, they could have just mapped the speed to a button rather than having it to be a pause menu. Because I don't think pausing should ever be part of the shmup gameplay. Because, man, you could just start 
you could justifiably start pause buffering all the time and stuff. Like these here. This bit here, I, I just give up and uh, let myself... I wish it was like Garega though, and when you died, you damaged the boss. I was kind of testing to see if that even worked, but no, it does not. They did not think of that yet. That has not been invented. But the thing about it is, when you're this depowered, this section is pretty much impossible. Because those missiles, they'll they'll uh, they'll chase you for a really long time. Normally in shmup. They'll do like a lap or two, right? You like you'll dodge them, then you dodge them again, and then they they time out and die. Not these missiles. They'll just keep going at you till he fires the next set. So you're always kind of, and you don't have enough. That was stupid. You have a suicide missile, and you don't really have enough backup firepower to take them out unless you're fully powered up going into it. So that's a, a real run killer, where basically you could play perfectly. I had some runs like it where I played perfectly all the way up to that section, got clipped by a missile, completely depowered, run over. And you know, the, the movement's random too, so you, you can't completely... The missiles act in a predictable fashion, but the boss movement itself is random, so it, you can't act in a completely predictable fashion either. Real annoying. So these bosses, this boss is very easy, like way easier than the the, the mini boss before it. Another weird thing about this game is that your options take damage. So not only do you have to dodge with your robot guy, but you have to dodge your options too. You have to make sure your options aren't getting clipped. And I'm really bad about that. I think I do a fairly decent job on this part. I can't remember. I think the hit there, not good. They, they spawn really quickly in hard mode. Having a laser here would be really nice. You gotta play with that full, full speed movement. I think the next shmup I'll start playing, I might play it after I do this recording as one of the Thunder Force games, because you know those are so popular. Thunder Force 4 probably. Just see what I think about it on the old Genesis. The suicide bullet. Didn't expect that to happen. The section is pretty fun. Kind of, kind of ridiculous how hard it is to get around that giant ball with your big old ship. So everyone, every replay I see people play this section, this part of the game, in they always do this. And I'm really bad at this part because it's just that judging the hitboxes on this ship and the bullets is really unnatural for me. I'm used to having smaller hitboxes, so I'll often you'll often see when I'm playing like older shmups, especially like this one, I'll just die thinking I made the dodge. I'm thinking that okay, I dodged it and I'll just get hit because I'm not used to how huge these hitboxes tend to be, like that one right there. That, I just stood there because I was like, oh, okay, I, I got that. That's dodged. And it wasn't. So, 97. So, I needed to be literally just one, what, how, I don't even know how big, is that a million? I'm not even going to count the digits, but, you know, 98. Basically be it. But look how close I am to 99, 990. Very close. But you could improve the score if you came in here with just that little extra sauce. This guy will actually shoot and kill you. In my normal run, I had one extend, one extra extend, and he came in and killed me. And luckily I had that one extra extend, otherwise I would have lost the game right there at the end. That's a raising thing though, they do that in Sorcerer Striker as well. 
the kind of final revenge type thing. So look, you see, after you kill him, you get the bonus. So that's actually 10, zero, or 1, 0, 7. Got the score rollover rather than the counter stop. So yeah, that's my Musha run. I wanted to show it because I actually do play old school shmups from time to time. I'll probably be playing them a little bit more now that I have my mister and I find that entertaining. So yeah, thanks for tuning in and uh, I guess I'll end by thanking my patron. So thank you to Dingo, Andy Capped, Anthony A, Ben Wynn, Brian Shiver, Corio, Dunpill2064, Eric H, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Gus, Hausu, Kiwi, Joe Angelo, John, Game Boy Guru, K, Malays, Mark, Toms, Martin Worrell, Maz, Mayher Clendian, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Oglo Cool, Mackie Factor, Sugumo, Plasmo, and Utakaya. Thanks for watching.